You had so much fun with this book. I did. The history of Penn <laughs> Dennis. I I loved it. Now it is eight hundred pages, so it's a long one. It's not for the faint heart, faint hearted. Um, small text as well. Like I would say, this could be a thousand pages in some editions. Um, yeah, quite quite tight text there. Oh wow, yeah, that's <laughs> maybe that's rough. Process. Yeah. Um, so it's a big commitment. Um, I think it's worth it. I think it's a fantastic book. It's it's yeah, Thackeray yeah, like at yeah. his mo. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, let's just go ahead and um, we'll just do it now. It gets there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's Thackeray, like, at his most thackeray you know? Like, all the characters have got silly names, like Dickens style as well. Um, it's yeah. just... I think I sent you a list of them, but I don't think I, I have to scroll way too far up our, um, our what chat. What was it? Like, them. the happy woman was, like... <sighs> She would have been like called like Miss Joy or something. Like I yeah, forget but her actual somehow name. sillier. There is. I do remember there's a doctor oh, yeah. called Doctor Good Enough because he's just gonna barely give you the correct treatment. I guess Doctor Good Enough. Um, this is about a chap, uh, Pen Dennis, and it's actually about two different Pen Dennises technically because his uncle is Major Pen Dennis. Um, so they both appear, but um. Essentially, what happens is the father has died, and so this boy is going to be the kind of heir to the family, you know, title and fortune. But they're not rich. You know, they live in a nice big old house, but they're not actually rich anymore. And the boy's, you know, a bit young and immature. Um, So that's like that's our starting point. And he lives with his mum and his sister, who's actually his adopted sister, but really his cousin. Okay. Mm. So... Initially, the first thing he does is fall in love with an actress. And this causes such horror and scandal that could not be believed that they actually have to send for the uncle to come down. Um, This is the book that invents the word Oxbridge, by the way, to refer to Oxford and Cambridge. It comes from this book. Um, Because he eventually goes to Oxbridge University and they don't actually tell us which. Which one. Which one, Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I found uh, her name, at least, for the actress, Fotheringay. Fotheringay, that Fotheringay, that's right. I'm just, I'm actually, here we go. I've scrolled, as far, while I've been talking, I've been scrolling. We have characters called things like Tiptoff, Blenkinsop, Sir Featherby, Thackthwaite, Mrs. Mantrap, Dr. Goodenough, and Clavering, and also yeah. Ponty, Pontypool and Wigsby. There's also another one I found, Fanny Bolton. Yes, there's also Fanny Bolton. Ah, and I've also found sure. this. I've written to you in the book also a lady called Fanny Fantail and Sir Percy Popjoy. And I have then said, I wonder if Percy popped his joy when he saw Fanny's Fantail. And I'm very happy with that. Very poetic. <laughs> so, okay. What happens is he loves the actress. Um, the actress is a drunken old Irish father because, of course, stereotypes. And... This is a scandal. So the uncle comes. The uncle's a man about town. Like he's not rich. He's a major on half pension, but like everyone knows him. He gets invitations to all the society places. You know, so he's very bothered that he's got to go out into the sticks to the the family home at Fair Oaks to see you know what they're getting on. And initially, he kind of sees them as like country bumpkins almost. You know, he's annoyed <laughs> that he's got to go there and miss his engagement. You know, at kind Twaddle's luncheon party or whatever. You know. So off he goes down and tries to give the boy a stern sort of talking to, you know. Um, so the boy's head over heels in love with the actress, and that's fine. But they they eventually break it off. There's a little hint that the major then kind of falls in love with the actress, which is very hi- <laughs> um, hypocritical. But nothing nothing comes of that. I think he's just captivated momentarily by her, you know, her beauty. Um. He ends up having to buy off the dad, I think, to, like, not get involved. But then there's this allegation that maybe he slept with her anyway. Now, he doesn't, actually. Um, But there is this allegation, and the mother is so distraught by it. Like, the possibility of the allegation that she ends up on her deathbed from the scandal, from the shock, 
maybe my boy has compromised a woman's honor and poor mother is almost dying and slight spoiler for something later in the novel i'm skipping ahead when she finds out nothing happens then she dies anyway from the relief of it (laughs) so you might be surprised one of my books has something similar to that oh wow okay not as extreme but yeah yeah now Um, let me add more layers so they live in the town of Clavering, and Clavering is, they're the, the first family because the Clavering family has been gone for decades. The Clavering family return. So now the Claverings of the town, it's their town, basically. The Claverings of Clavering. And um, they're the, the local squire. But the daughter there, Bianca, is also a lovely lady. <laughs> So now they say, well, what if we forget about that actress lady? What if we get you involved with this lady who's rich and um, more accomplished? And of course, she's a society girl. It's actually a marriage up for you a little bit, you know? And there's a funny line. Well, sorry, not the funny line. What's the word? A horrible sexist line um, where the major literally says... The exact it's as e- opposite. Right? <laughs> he says, it's as easy to marry her as it is to marry rich. But you'll have a lot more on the dinner table if you marry rich. Like, it doesn't matter who you marry. It's like, just pick a girl, but you might as well pick a rich one because you'll have an easier life. But they're they're all just as easy to obtain, you know. So they try to set him up with Bianca. But the mother wants him to marry his adopted sister, Laura. And the only thing that will make her happy is that the two people she cares about in the world get together. Now, there is this idea of, like, womanly virtue. So he meets all these worldly people, but really the good women are the mother and the daughter. And what do they do? They stay in their cottage indefinitely. And they don't do anything. And even when he comes home to visit on the holidays, he's so bored because they just sit around, you know. And that's it. And they, But the book tells it. And I, I sort of understand because it's teaching us about like the simplicities of country living and of staying with the family instead of going off to London and getting involved in all these decadent pursuits that he gets involved in. So they're trying to rein him in and say like the countryside life is better. Look at these paragons of virtue in your mother and sister. So one side of it is really nice, but the other side of the coin is, oh, we're supposed to hate all the girls who actually try to like do something and, you know, have a personality and like this one that stays at home. So that's not good. Pretty Victorian. Sounds about right. Yeah. Um, But he doesn't get with Bianca in the end. He does um, tease it, but Bianca and Laura figure out that they both like him and there's a bit of tension there. So he goes off to university. He becomes like the man, right? He is just the guy. Everybody knows him. Everybody loves him. The servants give him free meal. I don't know what university people has like the university staff leaving food to his dorm. Maybe that (laughs) happened in the 1800s, but... um, they're like queuing up outside to give him food. He's making speeches, you know, and they tell universities where you make uh, allies for life because, of course, they live in they're going to Oxford, basically, in, in London. Yeah. And they're, you know, his ambition is to become an MP. Right. That's what they're all planning on doing. Uh, and it's a rotten borough. Right. There's like 100 people in Clavering and he's like the one candidate. So he gets, is the MP. But that doesn't work out. But because Clavering comes back. But um Essentially, what happens then is he fails all his exams. He doesn't realize that he should study. He racks up a ton of debt. Her old mum mm-hmm. has to pay off all the debt. And then they're out of money. So then he goes home and poor sister Laura gives all the debt. And, you know, the mum's like, we can borrow it and we'll find a way to pay you back. And Laura, the perfect paragon of virtue that she is, she's like, well, all my money is from this family anyway. Just take it. Why would I need money? All I do is sit at home knitting, you know? <laughs> Give him the That's money he deserves. Point. It kind of it is also kind of fair. So like, give it to him. You know, my life's ambition is that he makes something of himself. You know, uh, and he's kind of not even that nice to them, really, which is a shame. He's just happy to sponge off them, and it's the typical. You get it in everything. You get it in Dickens. You get it in Balzac. It's this typical time period. You know, um, so he fails all his exams. He makes a, a mess of himself, and when he comes back, his sister has to convince him to do resets. For some reason, he doesn't even think that he can do the resets. He's just like, that's it. My life is done. Off I go to wander into the void, you know, the, the melodrama. And um, he they call it plucked. Apparently failing your exams is called being plucked at Oxford. But the major doesn't know what that means and is very startled. And he doesn't want to tell him that he doesn't know. So there's some funny sequences where the major is like discussing you know, how horrible it is of those boys to have plucked you without really knowing what has happened. <laughs> it just means he's failed his exams, you know? <laughs> he doesn't really know what it means. 
So he goes back and aces the exams a second time just by applying himself and not being a dandy, basically. So that's fine. Um, then there's some side stories because it turns out with the Claverings that the father's not really the father, but the mother had a previous husband and he comes back and there's a lot of wishy-washy stuff going on there um, and scandal. They find out about the scandal, so they basically blackmail him into giving up his post as MP and giving it to Arthur. But in those days, you just give it to your friend. You didn't need to necessarily have an election. Doesn't that happen today anyway? Theoretically, no, but yes, that did happen here. Uh, in that Northern did Ireland. happen with, uh, <laughs> it did. what's his name, Jeffrey yeah. Donaldson. It, it did actually happen. So then um, then there's Fanny Bolton. So Fanny is this poor little girl who cares for him when he gets a fever. Uh, and he's a friend, Foker, who also fancies his sister. Um, and he's supposed to be like a really good, reliable guy compared to all the rogues that he falls in with throughout the book, you know. Um, but Folk can't have the sister, so Foker just leaves. He he exiles himself and off he goes into the voids of the world. Um, this happens a lot, even in Dickens' books. You know, it's like, we can't be together? Then I'll spend the rest of my life just, you know, wandering around the seashores. I, I, don't know, I can't just stay here anymore. I, I don't know why. Um, wandering seems to be like a major thing. Like, you could just be yeah. a vagabond and it's <laughs> yeah. kind of okay. <laughs> kind of. I don't know why they do it, though, but yeah. So... There's multiple different times where he goes back to Bianca and thinks maybe he'll get with her, maybe he'll get with Laura. He proposes to Laura. He says, I think mum, who's now dead, wanted us to be together. Um, I've already, To be honest, I've already given my heart to others. But I guess we can. Why not? And Laura's like, oh, wow, I feel so romanced and seduced. Uh, no, that was a <laughs> terrible proposal and we will not get married. Um, spoiler alert, the happy ending is that they eventually do. That's why Folker leaves. Um... The girl Fanny also fancies him, but she's lower class again, so the Major is a second freak out that he's going to get involved with another lower class girl, and there's a second scandal, and it kind of goes on a bit, it gets a bit repetitive, you know. Um, the yeah. actress reappears because the Major got her a post in London, an acting job, and so then when he goes to see her, she reappears, but he doesn't fall in love with her a second time. It, it kind of goes on a bit, I'll be honest, the first half was very good and very engaging. The second half... It starts to talk more about the other characters than about Penn Dennis himself, and it really loses me. Then mm. it recovers it at the end. So you might say, like, the third quarter could be cut almost, you know? It's just like the Anna Karenina method of, like, let's just have more stuff happening with these other characters. But look, altogether, it's a good book. I love the melodrama. We do learn about Arthur, and the book actually ends with, like, a moral tale. The final lines are like, look, he did a lot of things wrong. He treated girls badly, he treated friends badly, he treated his family badly. He's a young lad, he's learning, he's learned life experiences, he's mature by the end of the novel, it's a life history basically, and he ends up married with kids. And it says we should forgive him his kind of growing pains sins, you know? And that's the moral lesson of the book, basically. Be kind to aristocrats, I guess. <laughs> But does it have to be aristocrats or just people? Yeah, I get. Well, I don't know. If, I don't know if Thackeray knew the difference. Um, but yes, to people, I guess. Mm -hmm. It's a. It's he didn't a fantastic. Read enough Dickens. He didn't read enough Dickens. So yeah, you, you said to me, "Is Thackeray and Wilkie Collins the same?" And I said, "Well, Wilkie Collins is Dickens' deputy. Thackeray is Dickens' enemy. Like Dickens is your lower class. <laughs> Thackeray is your upper class. Vanity Fair and all that. You know." Yeah. But what is um, Collins? Like, Collins lower, is lower just writing, as well. yeah, but he's also a bit more to the side. He's writing like some mystery stuff and different types of stuff. You know, he's not Dickens is trying to show you what the lower class is like. Collins is like tell some stories. Mm. It's slightly different. Um, That's nice. And you could argue that his books, in a way, have more normal people in them. Like Dickens, people are very, very gritty. You know, and Thackeray's are very. Ponzi. So I'm just double checking my notes, but I think I, I basically covered everything. I mean, it's a fantastic book. I highly, highly recommend it. It gets the yeah, yeah, yeah. And I liked Penn Dennis, but at times he's not a good guy. You know, you like him because he's your main character and you're stuck with him for 800 pages, but <laughs> at times he's not a good guy, but he learns his lessons, you know? And mm -hmm. even the old, the old major falls out with him at one point, you know, because he 
racks up all the debts and everything, you know, and almost scandalizes the family. But my favorite bit is is the mum, uh, you know, dying. <laughs> to be honest, to be honest, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. Like, oh yeah. no, everything's going poorly. Oh, everything's okay. Oh, thank you. Uh. Yeah, and then even Bianca doesn't end up well. I think she married. You know, her life doesn't work out. It's giving you these moral lessons that life doesn't work out for bad people, basically, and for self-centered people. It does for him because he learns and he ends up with Laura, who's this lovely, selfless girl, you know. Um, but that's the His first book, anyway. Stepsister. I think we have to not mention that bit. <laughs> <laughs> so that brings us to this month's uh, sponsor, Marrying Your Stepsister. No, but we are sponsored by the Society for Dickensian Thackerian Naming Conventions.gov.org. So if you'd like to write a book and have characters with these types of uh, names in it, you know, Sir Twaddlington or whatever, uh, get onto those guys and they'll, they'll help you write out. <laughs>